Welcome to another episode of Equity Mates. My name is Bryce, and as always, I'm joined here at Ausbiz by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, yes. Yeah. You've made it to the end of the week. Made it to the end of our week. Ausbiz week. Ausbiz week. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it a long, it's a long weekend every weekend here at Ausbiz, <laughs> Equity Mates on Ausbiz. Yes, but it's not a long weekend at <laughs> Equity Mates. The content train never stops. No, that is true. Although no. we don't release anything on a Friday. Yeah, we released the TikTok video on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we've made it to the end of the week. It's been a great week of reporting season as always. Um, we've been chatting about that. We had a great watch list Wednesday yesterday with um, Ian from uh, Fairlight Asset Management. We yeah. had Gemma from NAB Trade. So if you haven't have seen any of them, go and check them out. Plenty of, uh, plenty of discussions around reporting seasons and small caps and what's going on. But... We're ending today on a bit of an uh, an interesting note you threw to at the end of yesterday's episode about the uh, aftermath of the Bezos and Trump years yes. and the beef that Trump and Bezos have. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the context for this is this week, uh, Blue Origin, uh, Jeff Bezos's space company, sued the US government. As you um, do. As you do, well, yeah. as he does, we've never done it. Um, <laughs> but uh, sued uh, the US government uh, about a NASA procurement pro- process that was started under the Trump administration, uh, was finished early in Biden's administration, where SpaceX, Elon Musk's space company, was awarded a three or $2.9 billion contract for a moon lunar lander. Um, and... It sparked an interesting train of thought uh, about... Uh, it, it, the thought it sparked was Jeff Bezos is suing the government a lot these days because Amazon also has sued the government recently. Um, and as you peel that onion back, you realise that Trump and Bezos uh, had a lot of beef and these lawsuits seem to be the aftermath of that beef. So we want to we go back to the beginning, tell that story, but... More importantly, talk about these two lawsuits and what we can learn from them. So it's, let's start with the Bezos v. Trump. Yeah, let's start Let- with the clickbait, the <laughs> beef. Yeah, the, the wealthiest man in the world versus the most powerful. Well, and well, according to Trump, also, he's one of the wealthiest men in the world yeah, as well. According to Trump. <laughs> according <yeah>. to Trump. <laughs> so they don't like each other. Yes. And uh, during Trump's 2016 campaign, along with many other declarations, <laughs> he declared that Amazon was going to have such problems when he became president. Yes, yes. <laughs> and did that play out? Well, given that they've sued the government, <laughs> um, look, there was, there was a number of things that happened while Trump was in office. Um, so once elected, he pushed the US Postal Service to double the rate that Amazon <laughs> pays to ship packages. Um, he had a whole lot of rhetoric around how Amazon was screwing the US Postal Service and... Um, that turns out turned out to be factually false. The U.S. Postal Service legally isn't allowed to lose money on any parcel they send, but that that's never stopped Trump before. <laughs> no way! I did not know that. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. Interesting. They yeah. have to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, I guess so. Government yeah. Postal Service. I don't think they make a lot of money. But, yeah, but um, they're not. Yeah. they're not being. Uh, yeah, they're not and I think losses. I th- do your own research on this, but I think Amazon was their biggest customer and contributed something like $7 billion in revenue or something. Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the US Postal Service was one sort of avenue of their beef. Um, uh, there's reports that have come out that uh, Trump was telling staff that he was going to screw Amazon, quote, screw Amazon, <laughs> um, with a whole bunch of contracts. Um, and meanwhile... Jeff Bezos, uh, owner of the Washington Post, yep. uh, was heavily investigating Trump. Well, the newspaper, newspaper was heavily was, investigating yeah. Trump and um, was between them and the New York Times, they were probably the two most, uh, I guess, diligent in their reporting, uh, but also most scathing in their reporting. Mm. Uh, a lot of investigative pieces coming out of those two papers. Which Trump would have loved. Loved it. <laughs> and he, uh, Trump actually called... His, you know how he gave everything nicknames? Yeah. Jeez, it's like we're reminiscing. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he called the Washington Post the Amazon Washington Post. Hated right. it. Um, yeah, so a lot of beef. This, And then there's a lot of conjecture around this. This is obviously uh, only conjecture, but you, do you remember how uh, when Bezos 
broke up with his wife, those pictures were leaked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they were leaked by the National Enquirer, and Trump has a lot of connections to the National Enquirer. Uh, you know, do you remember the catch and kill stories? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the National yeah. Enquirer were doing the catch and kill stories. And apparently the way that the National Enquirer got those photos was a Trump supporter who was related to... Uh, the woman that Bezos was seeing like got them and gave them to the National Jeez. Enquirer and Trump somehow knew about it. Obviously, all conjecture. I'm going to assume he probably didn't know about it because he was the president and he yeah. was probably pretty busy. Yeah. But like a lot of bad blood between those two. Yeah. Um, so that's, I guess, the, the salacious backstory <laughs> to the business story yeah. that we're going to turn to. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, well... Um, so we spoke about the Blue Origin SpaceX, which we'll touch on at the end. But um, Amazon have sued Microsoft. Sued the government to stop Microsoft. Sorry, the government to stop Microsoft over a US Department of Defense uh, infrastructure project. Yeah, so this was uh, probably one of the biggest contracts uh, that the Department of Defense had outside of like weapon systems yeah, and yeah. tanks and planes. Yeah. It was a... Uh, $10 billion, 10-year cloud computing project, basically to overhaul all of the IT infrastructure that the Department of Defense and all of the branches of the military used. Yeah. Um, and really to bring them into the 21st century. Um, massive project. Massive project. Yeah. Um, and many people thought Amazon Web Services was the clear front runner. Google was also uh, considered likely, but then... Google had to pull out because of a staff revolt over working with the Department of Defense. So Google pulled out of the running. Everyone thought this was Amazon's to, to lose. The Amazon, uh, the Google employees were anti-working for the Department yeah. of Defense. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And they, with, and they had such uh, feedback that they forced their company to withdraw. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whole other story that it's, it's really interesting to look into, but not, not related to no, what we're talking yeah. about. Um, Trump delayed the awarding of the um, of the contract, contract and yeah. uh, ordered them to look into uh, allegations of favoritism towards Amazon. Um, so that delayed the awarding of the contract a few months. Uh, that that was around the time he told a Defense Department official, reportedly told a Defense Department official he was going to screw Amazon. Um, <laughs> and then Microsoft uh, gets awarded nowhere. the contract, which surprised everyone. Um, Amazon filed a complaint uh, and in 2020 a court halted Microsoft's work on the project finding it was likely uh, that the Department of Defense improperly evaluated the offers. Um, wow. Yes. And subsequently it's been ripped up. Yeah. Been and ri now there's a new, um, a new process of, I guess, tender process. Well, a new program altogether, and it's going to involve multiple vendors. So the whole program was scrapped and sort of reconstituted. Jeez. Yeah, so that that was the first, I guess, um, big Trump Bezos story and blow up. And um, so Amazon won that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Microsoft would be spewing. Spewing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that, I guess, sets the scene for now this news story that uh, has come out this week. Yeah. About Jeff Bezos' other company. Blue Origin. Blue Origin. Suing SpaceX. Just suing, suing the government, the government to, to stop, stop SpaceX. SpaceX. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week, as you said, Jeff Bezos... Um, yeah, uh, filing a lawsuit for this NASA contract, yes. $3 billion NASA contract. So the backstory here is tr one of Trump's big ambitions was to return to the moon and to dominate Personally. space. <laughs> 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 um, and so he created the Space Force, which we all remember. Yeah, and yeah. Um, then uh, Trump uh, called it the Artemis program, uh, which was to return to the moon by 2024. Um, so... As part of that, it was, you know, a lot of contracts, a lot of uh, tenders with these new private space organisations rather than NASA doing it all themselves uh, as, you know, as they did in the, the 1960s. Um, and during this tender process, uh, Blue Origin bid with a partner and SpaceX bid as well. And uh, Blue Origin is alleging in this latest court filing 
uh, that there was an unfair procurement process because NASA allowed SpaceX to revise their bid and then spa they started negotiating with SpaceX before they awarded the bid uh, without giving Blue Origin the opportunity to do either of those two things. I mean, on paper, you feel like that there's going to be another ripped up contract here and they're going to go back to the drawing board. Like if that was the case and those things did play out, then you can see that Blue Origin has something to argue for. Yeah, I mean, they will definitely argue it. I think the where the Microsoft Amazon one was a little bit clearer and in the Amazon Microsoft one, Amazon literally wanted to call Trump to the stand. To, really? Because they were like, we're so confident that he said, you know, he's done all this. He's put his fingers on the scale that we want it. We, part of their legal strategy was to call was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he obviously didn't do it. No, well, it yeah. didn't get to that point. Yeah. Um, but, and maybe that was just a bit of clickbait from Amazon to get in the headlines. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Put some, put some media pressure on. Um, <laughs> What's Elon saying about this? Nothing yet. They're just waiting. Yeah, um, right. But I think the difference here where uh, the Amazon Microsoft one, um, there was obviously some questions that the judge agreed to. This one, I think, SpaceX came in a lot cheaper. And so in a bidding process, I think it's, it will be more unlikely that it's found that there was an improper evaluation of the bids or anything like that. Because they're so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I, I saw recently that... Uh, uh, Trump has found his voice again and is back on the campaign trail, so I'm sure there he's going to go. be. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to. Well, be. Jeff Bezos will be sweating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so yeah. watch this space. Yeah. No pun intended. No pun intended. I mean, <coughs> obviously, Blue Origin and SpaceX aren't listed, so not a lot of investing implications there. I think the Amazon and Microsoft story, though, is a really interesting one. Mm. Just when we think we think about AWS and Azure, the the two companies' respective cloud offerings and how important that's been to business. But I think what we're going to see is every business and yeah. every form of government, every branch of government, every level of government around the world needing Google, Microsoft, Amazon to move to the cloud. Yeah. And so it's, you know, the Department of Defense is 10 billion, but the total size of the pie around massive. the world is massive. Well, I was listening to Scott Galloway recently and he said that, uh, if and when um, AWS is split from Amazon, it'll be the most valuable company in the world. Huge call. Yeah, <laughs> huge call. But Why does he think that they'll get split? Do, like, does he think the government will split Oh, just the up? classic, like, um, yeah, just the classic, let's split big tech. Right. Um, and get rid of all their individual parts. And he thinks that in that process, AWS might be spun out on its own and uh, if that's the case, his throwaway comment was that it will become the most valuable company in the world. Really? Yeah. There you go. And it kind of goes hand in hand with what you're saying. Like if the size of the prize is so big, um, it, it might, yeah, you, can, you could see it being bigger than the e-commerce giant that Amazon is. You could definitely see it being bigger than the e-commerce giant. Could you see it being bigger than the $2.2 .2 trillion Apple? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, but it's an interesting thought. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. There you go. According to Scott Galloway, long Amazon then. Absolutely. We're not here to give buy, hold or sell recommendations. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, he's long Amazon and very long Google, but not buy, hold or sell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that brings us to the end of our week here at Ausbiz. Ausbiz. It's been a great week. Make sure you go and check out all of our videos uh, from this week. A lot of reporting season, which will uh, obviously continue with next week as well. So... Uh, have a great rest of your week and Ren, we will be back next Monday. Sounds good.